Well, good morning. <clears throat> it's a um, nice, brisk morning out here today, and it's great to be able to be with you for a few moments. On Sunday, we looked at Mark chapter 6, and we talked about the reason why the gospel is such a dangerous message, both then in Christ's day and today. We talked about religion and the fact that Christ was confronting religion, works righteousness, um, every single day when he preached and, and would talk about repentance and faith. Relationships were the second thing we talked about, how that <clears throat> we risk sometimes our relationships with others, with family, with friends, by sharing the gospel with them because of the negativity that sometimes happens around it. Then the rejection that we potentially will, will get, and that's difficult. It's really hard to be rejected by, by others, and, and Christ certainly was rejected by those in his own hometown, potentially family and friends that he had known for years. And then the fact that the message calls for repentance. And that wonderful story of, and I say wonderful but awful, of John the Baptist as he boldly and courageously confronted the King Tetrarch Herod Antipas as he was committing awful, awful sin, and it ended up, ended up costing John his life. That matter of repentance, I want to talk a little bit more about this morning. Um, repentance is something that Jesus said was, was what he came to preach, the gospel of repentance, turning from your sin, turning to God, and turning by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was the theme that Jesus gave the disciples as he sent them out two by two to go and do preaching and teaching. And scripture says in Mark 6, 12, that they went out and preached that people should repent. And whenever you, you hear that, you think, wow, that's going to be a tough message. That's going to be a, a hard message for people to hear because no one, first of all, wants to hear about their sin. And then, not only do people not want to hear about their sin, they don't want to hear that they should turn from that sin, turn away from it, and, and turn to God. And so that message of repentance was one that was going to be very difficult for them. Um, I'm sure that people would reject, people would not want to hear. And the same is true today. When we think about repentance, um, it's, it's, a, it's a very deeply personal thing because it's, it's helping us, teaching us to deal with our sin. And of course, that begins by acknowledging and recognizing and, and openly saying we are sinners and there is there's a lot that's involved in that isn't it now i want to talk this morning a little bit about repentance as an ongoing practice in our lives as believers because of course when we <coughs> excuse me when we initially come to christ by faith we need to repent of our sin put our faith in Jesus Christ, accept what he has done for us. So there, there's that initial repentance. But as we know, because of the ongoing battle that we have with sin, repentance is something that we need to continue to practice in our lives. Forgiveness comes to us by faith in Christ. Christ promised that because of his work on the cross. But there is a, a consistent need for us when we fall into sin 
to recognize who we are, to once again admit our sin and repent from that sin and, and turn from it. Um, so that's, that's what I want to focus in on this morning. Is how does the act of repentance continually impact us as believers today? How does it impact the world? It, it's still a, a very contentious message. Um, as you know, and we, we talked a little bit about this on Sunday, sin is now the tables have been turned upside down. So much of sin is now um, looked at as normal and natural and okay. Um, and, and we could talk about, and I don't want us to get bogged down in talking about the different sins that are, are looked at today as, as okay. Um, because that will sidetrack us from what we're, what we're focusing on this morning. But we all know what we're talking about. We all know the, the sin that even is in our own hearts. And, and so repentance is a still a very dangerous message. And it's a dangerous message for us. Because as we live our lives as God's people... There's a, there's a need for us to recognize our sin, to um, confront it, to admit it, to repent of it, turn from our sin back to, back to God. There's some passages that I want to look at today. Um, in the book of Romans chapter 2, um, Paul is, is talking to the believers in in Rome and and he's talking about how there was a an approval of the practice of sin and um, and the condemn, condemnation and judgment that that they were making on each other um, and talking about God's judgment and so here's what. Paul said, he said, or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience that some were saying, well, we can sin anyway and it, and it doesn't really matter. And Paul said, you are, you are presuming on God's forbearance and, and patience. What you need to do is know that God's kindness or his mercy is meant to lead you to repentance. That's a powerful thought, isn't it? that the gospel, understanding, recognizing, and knowing the mercy of God should lead us to repentance in our lives on a daily basis. And this is where we talked about this at the end of our service when we were doing communion, that we are reminded regularly as we go to the Word of God and as we are reminded of the gospel, and this is the depth of the gospel that we we grasp and that we know and why it's so important for us to know the gospel in a greater way. You know, we get sidetracked on a lot of other issues and things that we that we study when in actual fact we're not living the gospel sometimes. And I think it's a, it's a sad thing when Christians can't even realize that their own lives, their own testimony, their own living before the world is being challenged because people are watching and seeing how they live and saying, I thought they were Christians. Why? Why can they live that way? Why do they, how can they treat people that way? And, and part of the point Paul is making here is that God's kindness, God's mercy, His grace should be leading us to repentance. That's what, sh that's what led us to repentance in the first place. When we came to faith, we understood that God's mercy was on us. We didn't de deserve His love. We didn't deserve the sacrifice of Jesus. But 
because of that, it led us to a place where we repented of our sins and turned from our sin to, to God. But that's also a, a daily and a weekly and a, you know, in our lives as we live, if we truly have a grasp on the mercy of God, on the grace of God, on what God did for us as he sent his son to the cross, then it will once again lead us to a place of repentance. If we really get a hold of it, if we allow it to infuse our lives, if we are preaching the gospel to ourselves every day, then repentance will, will immediately come in our lives because we recognize how unworthy we are of what God has done. We recognize how much He has given us through His Son, through the sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. And that's a very powerful, powerful thing. Over the years of ministry that I've had, multiple times people have asked me, what am I, what am I doing? What, how do I deal with the sin that's going on in my life? And I've had various answers over the years, but today, if you ask me that same question, I would, I would say immerse yourself in the gospel. Preach the gospel to yourself. Remember what it was that Jesus did for you and allow that truth and allow that um, kindness of God, mercy of God, to lead you to repentance and lead you to a place where you recognize the mercy and grace of God in a powerful way and repent of your sin, turn from it and turn to Him. And, and, and that's not a one-time thing. In fact, if you think about, you've heard me talk before about the, the reformer, Martin Luther. Um, he's written a lot about repentance. There's a few quotes here that I've looked at. Uh, Martin Luther said this, Repentance goes wrong when it forgets Christ and faith. This happens when repentance is seen only as our works and when it is sidetracked into debating what is right and what is wrong. If the point is, well, did what I did was right or, or what I did was wrong, and arguing about that, Luther writes, he says, no, that's when it, when it gets sidetracked. No, Luther writes, true repentance throws it all together and says everything in us is sin. True repentance teaches us to discern sin by saying we are completely lost and we need to repent. And, of course, Luther was actually fighting against some of the rituals of the church that he had come out of and, and, and professing sin to a clergy and being saved through that process. And Luther said, no, this is an inner process that needs to be done throughout our lifetime. Um, he said, the salvation that produces repentance, according to Luther, comes from a life of inner peace through faith in God. He wrote this as well in his thesis. For when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he intended that the entire life of believers should be repentance. All of life is repentance. Turning from sin and trusting in the good news that Jesus saves sinners aren't merely a one-time inaugural experience, but the daily substance of Christianity. The gospel is for every day and every moment. Repentance is to be the Christian's continual posture. I love that. And that's where we need to make sure that we're not allowing sin to live in us. And we remember the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. So much more that we can say. I would challenge you that this is a great study that you could do in your life to look at what the scripture says about repentance. So today, as you think about the mercy and grace of God, make sure that you spend some time repenting of your sin. 
and turning to God in faith. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your grace and goodness to us. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to think about your word and the depth of the gospel. I pray that, as Luther said, we would live lives of repentance, recognizing that your grace and mercy leads us to that place where we repent of our sin and turn from it in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you are doing for us. And guide each one of us as we live these lives and seek to be like Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace to us. We pray all of this, Lord. Take us through this, this week. And we trust you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for tuning in this morning, and I trust that you will have a wonderful day and the rest of the week. We'll see you on the weekend as we continue in our study in the book of Mark. God bless.